everyone, Physics Ninja here. Today I want to look at a problem of a parallel plate capacitor and I want to see what happens to the capacitance when I put a metal slab between the plates. So let's have a go and how we solve a problem like this. Okay, so here's the system in question. I'm inserting a metal slab and a capacitor. So let's consider this parallel plate capacitor here. I'm going to assume that this parallel plate capacitor is charged. That means there is a charge plus Q on one plate and minus Q on the other plate. Other things, the area of the plate is given by A and the spacing between the plates initially is D. For this system here on the left, the capacitance you should know is simply equal if it's air filled or vacuum filled divided by D. That's pretty straightforward. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this blue metal slab and we're going to slowly place it towards the plate and at the end we're left with a figure all the way on the right. So you see the metal plate is, we'll set it in the middle for now, but we'll take some other cases uh, after we solve the initial problem. So importantly the, the piece of metal doesn't touch any of the plates, that's important. You don't want the metal to touch any of the plates. So we do have a little gap above and below the plate. But here's the final system. How do we calculate what is the capacitance of this final system here on the right? All right, so if you consider uh, what's going on here, as I bring this metal slab closer, I mean, this parallel plate here produces an electric field. So we can draw some of the field lines here. Between the plates, electric field just points down from positive to negative. If you start looking on the side, you get some fringing going on. The electric field might look it's weaker, but it might look kind of fringed like this. So imagine here I bring this metal slab a little bit closer uh, to the parallel plate capacitor. Now what do you think is going to happen? Well, again, if, even if the total charge of this metal slab is zero, if I place it in the electric field produced by uh, this capacitor, you're going to get negative charge that's going to accumulate more on one side than the other side. So that means the other side is going to be left more positively charged because the electrons are attracted more to the positive plate. Um, so they're going to gather more on that side. So that actually produces an attractive force and this metal slab will actually get pulled in between the plates because of this attractive force. And at the end of the day I'm left with uh, the figure down over here. Okay, so here's the metal plate now inside the capacitor and this is what the final charge distribution looks like. Uh, remember the electric field inside this conductor here has to be equal to zero and you're going to get a cancellation. You're going to get an electric field from the capacitor which points in this direction and then you're going to get an electric field within the conductor and that's going to be equal and opposite such that the total electric field has to be equal to zero inside the conductor inside conductor okay so now we're left with the question what is the overall capacitance of this system here now it really helps to redraw this so let's redraw this diagram in a slightly different way over here okay so let's put the original plates they have charge like this that doesn't change negative charge on the bottom surface so instead of drawing the big metal slab here, what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to draw the top surface. That's where I have some negative charges. And I'm simply going to draw the bottom surface where I have some net positive charge. Now between both of those, I can connect them with anything. I'm just going to choose to connect them with a simple wire, just like this. And again, let's put our charges there so we can see what's going on. So this picture should look familiar to you if I redraw the system like this. All we have here now are two capacitors. All right, we've got a capacitor over here, let's call this C1, and we've got a wire, and we've got another capacitor over here, C2. Now the charge on each of these plates has to be the same. All right, remember what we said, this charge here was plus Q, this charge here was minus Q, 
And again, the charge on this inner surface is going to be minus Q. And the charge of that slab, the bottom surface of the slab, has to be plus Q. So what we have here are C1 and C2 are two capacitors, simply parallel plate capacitors, uh, in series with each other. So this problem, when you insert this metal plate inside here, simply boils down to a simple system of two capacitors in series with each other. So all we have to do now is find what is the equivalent capacitor of this entire system. Now the spacing is different now because the metal slab had an overall thickness A, which I've written over here. But let's go ahead with the next calculation and see what the total effective capacitance is of the initial parallel plate capacitor with the metal slab inserted inside. Here's the system of two capacitors in series. We had our initial, initial spacing between the two plates was equal to D. And I also had that thickness of this metal slab was equal to A. Now this means that this spacing over here Right, between the top plate of the metal slab and the top plate of the initial capacitor. This here has to be D minus A divided by 2. And likewise, uh, likewise with this other D minus A divided by 2, this other spacing down here at the bottom. All right, so I need that, right? Because I need the spacing between the plates in order to find what the capacitance is. So let's call the first one C1 and the bottom one here C2. One thing I know is that they have to be the same. There is air between both of them, the spacing is the same, and the area of the plates is the same. So we have to have that C1 must be equal to C2. All right, the next thing we know is that if these are parallel plate capacitors, which we're assuming they are, the capacitance C1 simply equal to epsilon zero, since we have vacuum or air between the plates, the area A, and divided by the distance between the plates. In this case, it's simply D minus A, and divided by two. Now you can bring that two upstairs just to clean up the expression here. So this is what the expression of one of the capacitance look like. And that's it. However, now we have two of them in series, right? If we have two of them in series, one thing you should remember about capacitors in series, um, when you add them up, if you want to get an equivalent capacitance, this is the expression, 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2. Now, since these are the same, we simply have 2 over C1 is our capacitance. And that means that the equivalent capacitance is simply C1 over 2. And I know, I just calculated what C1 was. So at the end of the day, my final expression, see this 2 in the denominator is going to cancel with the 2 in the numerator, which came from the spacing. So we're going to be left with epsilon 0 times A divided by D minus A. Here's my equivalent capacitance for this entire system here. So here's my expression. The first thing we notice is that C equivalent here is bigger than my original capacitance that I started off with. Right? Because here I'm going to be dividing by a number that's small compared to just D. The other interesting thing to do is let's take some limits. Taking limits is kind of a great way of checking your result. So one of the limits we could take is what if A tends towards zero. What does that mean? If A goes towards zero, that means there's no slab. <laughs> if there's no slab, what is the result? Well, my C equivalent is simply equal to, again, I have to set A equals to zero here in this limit, and I'm left with the initial result that I started out with. Right? If there is no slab, I should just have the initial capacitance that I started out with. Uh, the second limit you can take is the one I've got here in the diagram. What happens if you move this all the way down? So you move the slab to this lower plate. So I still have a thickness A, 
The spacing between the original plates is still D, but I've moved the slab now so it's no longer centered between the original two plates. So what happens now? Actually, I've also removed the negative charges. Right, if you set up a piece of metal that's in contact with one of the plates, what's going to happen is you're simply going to have this system here. All of those negative charges that were originally on this bottom plate are simply free to move, and they're going to be attracted to the positive plate like this. So this here simply looks like a parallel plate capacitor, doesn't it? Except now the spacing between the plates, this is the spacing between the plates, and you can see the spacing between the plates is simply D minus A. So again, now if you want to find a, an equation for the parallel plate capacitor with a spacing of D minus A, you should simply be able to write that right away. C is equal to epsilon zero, what's between the plates, the area of the plates, divided by the spacing between the plates, D minus A. So that result also makes sense. Uh, so the next question you can ask yourself is what happens to the potential energy of the system? Well, remember when we were kind of uh, bringing this in slowly, we had some negative charges here and some positive charges. and Really, this would produce a force, right? We have some electrostatic forces because we have attractive forces between the top plate here and the negative charges on the slab and um, also with the bottom plate and the positive charges on the slab. So that produces some net force acting uh, to the left in this case. Uh, we also have a displacement. Right? We have that the overall we have a displacement D as a vector. Um, now the force is not constant. Um, the displacement is simply going to be to the left. So in this case we know that the work done by the electric field uh, has to be greater than zero because the force and the displacement are going to be in the same direction. And one thing we remember from the work done by any conservative force is minus the change in potential energy. That's minus U final minus U initial or U initial minus U final. Now if the work is bigger than zero that means that my initial potential energy has to be bigger than the final potential energy of the system. So what was the initial potential energy of the system? Um, potential energy for a capacitor you can write kind of a lot of different ways. Um, the way that's kind of more useful in this case I think is this expression over here. All right, Q is the charge on the plate divided by the capacitance. Uh, let me just make a comment. You could also write this as one half Q of the plates and the potential difference between the plates, or well, if you want to write it in terms of the capacitance, there's kind of three ways you can write that. Um, but this is the way I choose to write it here. You have three variables and there's three combinations of the same equation. So remember what our initial capacitance was, epsilon zero, A, uh, divided by D. So there's the initial value. Now if I compare that to the final value, the final value, if I compare that now to the final value, uh, the final value, again, it's the same expression, it's one half. The charge on the plates is the same, even though we have capacitors in series. Except now the capacitance is the effective capacitance, the equivalent capacitance that I calculated. And that expression was epsilon zero, the area of the plates was the same, and divided by the spacing, which is D minus A in this case. Um, so you can see, since the D minus A here is in the numerator, we're definitely going to find that our final potential energy is going to be less than the initial potential energy. So things are also consistent with the physics uh, that we had in the problem. So that's it for this problem. I uh, hope you uh, understood this explanation. Uh, consider subscribing to my channel or like the video. Um, see you soon.